This is my filtering dewatering system version 2.0. What I ended up doing was one, moving it inside my garage, and two, I got rid of this first tank. It's now a one tank system. The reason being that I realized that I didn't really need two tanks because the oil that I get is generally clean. And the fact is, is that if you let this, this stuff settle in the cubies for at least two weeks, and if it's hot out, that even expedites it more, that that does a lot of the settling process. And that generally, it'll always settle out with gravity and time. I also realized that I tend to do the oil in batches. That is, is I don't let the oil stay in the tanks because one, I live in Southern California. And the other issue is you have issues with uh, condensation. So if the oil, if the tank was to be half full, and it was hot out or cold out and then the, you know water would form on the lid and then I'd have to reprocess the oil so it's best to get the oil into, into the cubies you know filter it and then put it in the cubies and seal them and then there's less chance of watery water being introduced into the uh, oil so this is I won't go over into the heating system because that's in the other video the heat wrap this is an old just one of the tanks that I had in the backyard and there's a whole there's a heating uh, wrap around there uh, underneath that insulation but again that's in the other video the way the system is now is again I let the oil settle in the cubies sometimes it takes months or a month or whatever before I get enough oil to process to fill this tank up this tank has been heated for five days it's now Monday and it's been on since Wednesday so that's actually longer than that but it's been heating and as you can see it's full and these are what I have here a 10 micron to a 5 micron double sock I'll put it through that, let it heat like I have, and then when I'm ready to process it, I'll pump it out through here and I'll go through this two micron, and then this is a one micron. And as for the pump, I have my 12 volt pump that I had from before. Um, some people use electric, but I happen to have had this pump um, to get this kind of pump. The 12 volt was the most economical. And then I went to the local auto parts store and bought a deep cycle marine battery. Um, I didn't really do much of my homework. It was sort of the cheapest one I could buy but it is a deep cycle which is you know meant for this kind of processing and then I purchased a charger the cheapest charger I could buy and I think it ended up costing me like over a hundred bucks or maybe 120 bucks for both those items these orange containers are just some uh, vegetable oil some uh, people gave me from their turkey frying but in generally I, I keep my cubies in this area here when they need to settle um, preferably in the cardboard boxes obviously so they can be stacked but just imagine that you know as I get a cube I let it here it settles for however long once I get enough cubies to fill this guy up I'll fill it all up at once I know that generally speaking it, 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 after about eight cubies I get to the bottom of the usable oil area then it starts sucking air so once I know that I've got about eight cubies I can fill this up to a, a reasonable level and start to process the oil I hooked up my battery here, my pump to the battery, and now I have my pump. And what I'm going to do is turn it on, and I'm going to rinse out some of these cubies because, as you can see, they get muck in them. And the idea is, I'll keep this one as the the reception one. But basically, if I want to use this guy, I want to make sure that it's clean. So what I'll do is I'll rinse it out before I put the new oil in there pretty nasty looking in there so we'll turn this on it's get, going to get kind of loud and I'll put a little bit of oil in it that's all I need and then what I'll do is I will slush it around and pour any of the muck that's in there into another container and even if I don't get it all this will eventually resettle so that if you do have any imperfections in there you know some more dirt like this container isn't perfect but the onboard filtering system in the car will get the balance and also anything that's um, left in there will generally set, resettle out what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill this container up halfway This is my first batch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. And I think these plans are on the plant drive, or not the plant drive, the, the uh, Frybrid site. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake this up. It's really good. And the idea is to mix it up. What we have here is the oil that I just shook up. 
wash it down again for another good measure. The idea is to mix up everything so in case there's any water in there, it's mixed in. And what we'll do is we'll take a small sample. I just get a piece of uh, wire here. Doesn't really matter what you use, but just that you can get a droplet on it, which I have there. And then we'll bring it over to my frying pan. What we want to do is just put a small drop on the frying pan. I have my trusty magnifying glass. And we just examine it for air bubbles, and I don't see any. The other telltale sign is if you see them popping. You see some popping going in there. That usually means you have a lot of water. I'll do it again just to make sure and I don't hear anything nor do I see anything. So as far as I'm concerned this water, this oil is dewatered. So now that I know this, this oil is dewatered I'll just go ahead and finish filling up this QB. I've done I filled up four containers in the meantime. And what I ended up doing is I ended up going in and removing the one micron filter from here because it's just taxing the, the motor too much on the pump. So what it does now is it goes from a, a 10 micron to a five micron double sock as I pour the oil in. And then from there it goes out to this two micron permacool filter and the blue canister is empty. I would think if you had a stronger pump you'd be okay to run the one micron but I figure two microns is fine since I only have a 10 micron on the car and I just don't want to be taxing the motor it was just getting too hot and it just, I can tell it just didn't like it and I've pretty much doubled my flow I know from past experience how fast the oil is supposed to come out and it pretty much cut it in half so what we're going to do now is I'm going to since I, I've not tested water the tested water levels in those four containers so I'm going to do my fifth container I've got four more to go if the oil lasts that long and I'm going to fill up this container here halfway and then go do a water test. So what we have now here is my oil. It's about, well, it's not halfway filled up, but it's enough for the test. I'm going to shake it all up. And get a fresh dip. Put it in there. And I don't have any bubbles. Another one just for the heck of it. Looks pretty good. No water, so that's good. Still no water. Nope, oh, no water. There you are, I have eight containers. I just ran out of oil. I just started sucking air into the system, so I know that generally it's about seven inches of oil on the bottom of the, the, the can there, the barrel. I can get eight canisters out, eight cubies when it's filled up all the way. The other important thing to remember is to keep a log um, of how much oil you use because you are liable for federal road taxes at 24 cents per gallon. Um, depending on what state you are, you're either, you don't have to pay the state tax or uh, you do. In California it's 18, I don't know what the other states are. And one other benefit of having the, the oil right here is I can pump it right into my car because the gas fuel tank is right over there on the one side. So that's another benefit. Right now I've got a fair amount of oil in the tank so I wouldn't, that's why I didn't do it, but that is a possibility um, to use it that way. So that's about it. This is my 2.0 oil filtering dewatering system and I hope you find it helpful. And I gotta go charge the battery.